I'm so excited, I just can't hide it. Woo! What's up, my fellow handicappers? This is Weekend Handicapper from WeekendHandicapper.com. In this video, we're going to provide picks and analysis for the 2020 Breeders' Cup Classic, a race that people's been anxious to see for a good number of weeks now, and it might be a race that people's going to talk about for years to come, we shall see. But there's so many intriguing storylines, so many ways and angles you could go in this race, and so many good horses in this race. It's, this is a nice field, one that many believe we hadn't seen in, in a while. So I'm so excited to make this video. I'm so excited to bet this race. But before we do, if you want to learn how to bet on horses, and make money betting on horses. I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. Check out WeekendHandicapper.com so you can get all the latest tips, tools, and resources help you make money betting on thoroughbred horse races. All right, let's look at race 12 on Saturday, November 7th at Keeneland. It's post time, 5.13 Eastern time. And it's, you're going, well, we're not going anywhere. We're going to sit there and bet the race. The horses are going a mile and a quarter around on the dirt. All right, let's take it one horse at a time. And at the very end, I'll, I'll tell you who I like, who I plan on betting in this year's classic. Number one is Tacitus. What can you say about Tacitus? He's always around. Many times he doesn't get it done and he burns a lot of betters money, but he's always around. Hey, at least he's a pretty horse. You could just got that going for him. It's 21 morning line. Who knows? Maybe this, this race is the one where he shows up big time and hangs on, doesn't stumble out of the gate, all that other nonsense. He, he, he runs a complete race and gets it done. I think he's got the pace factor. Uh, in his favor too. So we'll talk about that more here in a little bit. Number two, Tis the Law. Tis the Law. He was probably the the headline horse pretty much all year until it lost in the Kentucky Derby. Came in second. Then he got a well deserved, well earned rest. How will this horse respond to that nice break? Will he come back and be like Tis the Law? We were we saw pretty much all year long until. First Saturday in September, or will it continue its losing streak? So we'll see. It's three to one morning line. Number three, by my standards, Gabriel Saez, uh, trained by Brett Calhoun. You're going to hear me say this a lot. There's a lot of speed in this race, and by my standards is one of them. That could be a detriment for a lot of these horses on the front end, especially if they aren't as good as the other horses, needless to say. So by my standards, has a shot for sure. 10 to 1 morning line. Number four, Tom's Detat for Joel Rosario's The Jockey. And uh, you got to love a seven-year-old horse still trying to get it done. He's had a wonderful year. He's done really well this year. And I was just said, talked about the early speed. This one, I think, can benefit from a lot of early speed up front. I think it could be sitting right there. Whether or not this old guy wins, I don't know. But definitely use it underneath in your exactus, trifectus, superfectus. It is 6 to 1 morning line. And wouldn't that be some Al Stahl uh, about 10 years ago with the Zenyatta race? Blame, he was the trainer of Blame, beat Zenyatta. Who, who was certainly a great horse. Would he, can he do it again with Tom's Day Tot here in the Breeders' Cup Classics? That'd be a heck of a storyline. You got to cheer for the old dudes, in this case, a seven year old horse taking on three year olds and four year olds' horses. Number five, title ready. Hey, never count out Dallas Dirt in these big races. A lot of people I've, hear, I've heard, Say, what is this horse doing in this race? There's been plenty of Kentucky Derbies, Kentucky Oaks that I've been part of on the losing end. You can check some of my videos in the past. will kind of kind of reiterate that. Dallas Stewart, a horse that I didn't think I have a shot, long shot horse, just kind of screws up 
people's tickets. Those years, people were saying, what is, what is this horse doing in this race? So on and so forth. This horse can now, are, they're saying that from a perspective of what is this horse doing in this race? Can it win? They don't think it can win. I don't think it can win either, but I think it's an excellent horse to use underneath in your trifectas, superfectas, and exactas. So if you have a, a fast pace, looks like it's going to happen. A lot of horses going out there on the front end. Then number five, title ready, could beef up your exotics underneath. Not saying he's going to win. I would be pretty surprised if that horse won, but... But underneath, heck yeah, you might beef up those exotics. Number six, higher power. The pace advantage might play to this horse benefit too. It's, set, it's going to set off the pace, or it should. But I don't know if it can, can uh, compete for the win. There's other talented horses. But if you like it, I, don't, I can't fault you. But this John Sadler horse. Uh, has his work cut out for him, in my opinion. Number seven, global campaign. Global campaign, 21 morning line. He's probably going to get out there on the lead as well. And whether or not it can sustain all that, it probably more likely be hanging off just a little bit off the front end. I think Javier Castellano, Javier, he's one of my favorite jockeys right now. I should be able to pronounce his name. Javier Castellano should be able to rate this horse pretty well, but whether or not it can compete and hang up there with all these other horses, I'm not so sure. But again, if you like it, especially in exotics, you can use it. Now we get to Baffert's horses. Baffert's horses, this is a field of 10, and Bob Baffert's got the three outside horses, starting with the morning line favorite, five to two morning line favorite. Improbable. Improbable has been in a zone. It has been running well. It seems like it's coming into the peak of its career or, or hitting, a, hitting a peak. We'll see if it's the peak of his career. But this, this horse is in great form. I can certainly understand why this horse is the morning line favorite. Five to two just beat maximum security last time. Been working out really well. Bob Baffert seems to be confident in this horse. Hey, if you're a big believer in form and a good thing and momentum, then this horse should fit your eye pretty good. But it's the morning line favorite. So we'll see what its odds are at post time. But I certainly can't knock improbable. It was my derby horse uh, back in 2019. or One of my derby horses didn't come through for me on, on that day. Will it come through for betters on this day on Breeders' Cup Classic? In the Breeders' Cup Classic. Number nine, Authentic. We have the Kentucky Derby winner. Another early speed horse. Breaking from the outside. Unlike some of these races Authentic's been in, it's probably not going to get an easy lead. I, I, I doubt if it can get away or loose on the lead in this year's Breeders' Cup Classic. So be cautious when betting Authentic, I think. If it gets an early lead by itself, I will be certainly surprised. And I think the horse certainly has a chance if that happens, but I don't think that's going to happen. Six to one morning line. And number 10, maximum security. Good old Max. Max, a lot of drama going on with Max throughout his career. Uh, last time it raced, came in second. But I, I think that was just a prep race for this race coming up. I think Bob Baffert was just just tuning tuning up maximum security for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Now, does this horse still have top-notch, high-caliber races still in it? That remains to be seen, but 7-2 to two morning line. Max hadn't been like that in a while. It seems off the top of my uh, bald, shiny head, I can't recall Max being a 7-2 to two morning line in a long while. So, certainly a contender. All right, now, how am I going to bet the 2020 Breeders' Cup Classic? There's so many ways to go here, which makes it a great betting race, like all Breeders' Cup races are. There's, there's a lot of wonderful horses, 
that have a shot at winning, and I can't fault anybody for picking many of these horses. To me, I think it comes down to who's in good form and how the, how the pace scenario is going to be. I've heard from different sources and research I've done, people don't like Tis the Law's post position, drawing the inside on the number two post. I've never bet Tis the Law ever in my life because Tis the Law's always been chalk, heavy favorite. I think that that horse has had an excellent year and needed that rest that it got after the Kentucky Derby. I don't see anything wrong with betting Tis the Law to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. I don't think, I don't, I'm not a big, I'm not going, if that horse is a really good horse, then drawing the number two post shouldn't be a factor. People prefer horses to be on the outside, which is why everybody's talking about the Bob Baffert horses having a big advantage. So number eight, improbable, number nine, authentic, and number 10, maximum obscurity. I still going to, I'm going to give Tis the Law, finally going to put some money on Tis the Law, first time ever for me personally, betting Tis the Law, because I think it would be a good price. Improbable should be your favorite. I wouldn't be surprised if Maximum Security ends up being your favorite either. But Tis the Law too, I guess. But I think when all said and done, Improbable is probably going to be your morning line favorite and, or the post-time favorite. And probably should be because it's in the best form. So I think that horse has an excellent chance. To me, that's the horse to beat. You know, it's the it's the favorite. So of course, of course it is. But I'm going with Tis the Law to win. Maximum Security also has a shot. And if you want to get fancy on this Breeders' Cup Classic, maybe look. You got to try to think outside the box. If you put Maximum Security now from a horse racing fan perspective, a duel between improbable and maximum security or tis the law and improbable tis the law and maximum security it makes good storylines and headlines, but it's not probably good from a wagering perspective. So you, you might want to get a little fancy and think outside the box, include a horse like Tom's Day Todd underneath, a title ready, maybe in the third or fourth spot. I don't know if it could get up for second. You got to kind of think kind of differently and away from the crowd if you're trying to beef up those exotics. But to me, I want to give Tis the Law, number two Tis the Law, a good shot of winning this race. Hopefully the, the horse is well rested, ready to get back to its winning ways. I think the all the speed up front is going to play a role in how this race is going to unfold. One thing to say about that, there's been plenty of times I've handicapped races and I projected early speed, a bunch of early speed, and the jockeys know that too, so they, they are a little bit hesitant about getting out to in the front. Well, what happens is, all it takes is one jockey to kind of say, all right, nobody's going out here because everybody thinks there's going to be all this early speed. I'm going to go on out and they end up still in the race. So it's going to be interesting to see if that plays in to how this race unfolds. I can't fault you if you like authentic. Can't fault you if you like improbable. But my two horses for sure for a win would be number two, Tis the Law, and number 10, Maximum Security. I would love to hear who you're going to bet, who you like in this year's Breeders' Cup Classic. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Also, if you want full card selections of future Stars Day on Friday or Saturday Breeders' Cup Day, check out WeekendHandicapper.com. Also, I'll put a link in the description below. And again, if you want to learn how to bet on horses and make money betting on horses, not just on Breeders' Cup Day, but year-round, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit that like button, that notification bell, and check out WeekendHandicapper.com. Until next time, happy handicapping, smart wagering.